Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. I'm available for code reviews, contracting, and on-site training. In this episode, I am going to discuss a pretty touchy topic. I am used to seeing programmers use inline mostly for increasing performance. And the question is, how and why does or does not it actually affect performance? Now, I'd like to say primarily that your takeaway from this video should be that inline should be used when you need to to deal with linking. Like if you're going to have a definition of a file in multiple translation units and then are linking it. For example, if the definition of this add function were in a header file, we could make it inline. And if we were to make it inline, then it would be okay. We could link multiple translation units together and the compiler would merge these definitions into one in the final version. Now, of course, if you have multiple definitions that have that are different, then you're going to enter the realm of undefined behavior. But let's assume that you are using this correctly. And another way to accomplish this similar kind of thing would be to put it in an anonymous namespace, which effectively removes it from the translation units exported symbols. But let's go back to this. We have our add function. And we want to say add argc to itself. If you've been watching these videos for any length of time at all, or have done any of my trainings, you would fully expect this to be inlined. And you can see here that it has been inlined, and it is just returning the result of adding argc to itself. And if we take this down to our 02, 01, 01, it is actually making this call to the add function. So now let's go ahead and at this point, take a look at what inline may or may not actually accomplish. You have noticed down here, probably, that there is a second compiler explorer window. This is the Clang optimization viewer output window. And I got to that by clicking add new optimization output. It is currently disabled for me because I already have the optimization output displayed. So let us look here. We have this, and I'm going to attempt to zoom the interface a bit more so it is more visible on YouTube. Okay, so I've blown up the entire interface, and some of the UI components here are getting a little mangled, but it should be fine. This says here, missed. Add not inline to main because it should never be inlined. Okay, let's go ahead and put this back up to 02. Now we've got this as green. And this says, add inlined into main with a cost of negative 35 and a threshold of 337. So the compiler makes its own decisions about whether or not a function should be inlined based on its cost evaluation of this. So clearly, if a cost of 337 would be considered acceptable for inlining, then an actual calculated cost of negative 35 easily wins. So let's keep this in mind. Without, may, without inline, our cost is negative 35 and our threshold is 337. Like this. I just made a little note here so that we can be aware of it. I am now going to add the inline keyword in front of this. Now when I mouse over, our cost is still negative 35. We didn't actually change what the function is doing at all. But our threshold is now 487. In the case of Clang, by adding the inline keyword here, it has adjusted its threshold for what it thinks is worth actually inlining. But it already made all kinds of calculations without your input at all. And there is a good chance that by modifying this threshold, you are actually doing something that will perform worse because the compiler has a pretty good reason for why it set the threshold originally at 337. Let's go ahead and attempt to modify the cost of this also to see if we can get anything different here. Okay, so now we're in the realm of something with O2 having 
more than a single instruction that it actually executes. And we can see here our cost is now negative 25. So clearly the cost of including this in main has gone up because there are now more instructions that are coming into main. The threshold stays the same, 487. I remove inline the threshold. I expect to stay the same, 337. So the compiler has guidelines for on each platform what the cost is of actually making a function call and whether or not it's worth inlining this thing. And it's something that you should pretty much rely on. You almost certainly don't want to mess with this. But when you do, now you know what it is doing. Now, for the fun of it, we'll take this back to 01, and we'll add inline here, and see what it does. It is still not inlined it, and it is still saying not inline to main because the cost equals never, even though we have actually specified inline here, but 01 is not allowing that inlining. We shall also add const expert to this. This could easily be const expert. And we see with Clang, it is still not inlined. Let's go back up to O2 to allow inlining. And we see that our cost is negative 25 and our threshold is 337. And I'll change this note here. So the problem with comments is how easily they get out of sync with what the code is actually doing. So um, there you have it. Uh, this is how inline can affect the optimizer on some compilers. Clang gives us a somewhat unique advantage here of being able to easily see what the calculations are that it's performing and have an idea what inline is actually done and its effect on the optimizer and its decision to inline the function or not. So there you have it. I strongly suggest you don't use inline as a tool for performance. Use it as a tool for linking when you need to, but now you are aware of how it actually affects the optimizer. So thank you for watching and be sure to subscribe.